Ian Lamont, Sloan Fellows Video Blog, and with me I have Bob Shung, a dear friend, someone I've known for a long time, and he former actually bandmate, former bandmate, and a musician, and that's uh, there's a, still this musical connection going on in Bob's life that sadly has been missing from mine lately. Uh, but Bob is working on a really interesting uh, project at the MIT Media Lab, and uh, I don't know if anyone's, I don't, I don't think many people have heard about this, but this is pretty special. It's a robotic opera, and is it the first one that ever? I believe there have been robots that have appeared in operas before. Right. But this is this is kind of the biggest and the best, of course. <laughs> And it, it, the robots actually play a, a, a real role. They are characters in the show. Okay. Unlike unlike being just set pieces or something. Yeah. So all right. So and the interesting thing is there's a lot of the, there's a lot of robots in here. There's uh, some medium sized ones and then there's some gigantic ones. But Bob actually worked on the gi on this on the medium sized ones. And, oh, and the gigantic ones. And the gigantic ones too. But uh, let's take a look at one of the medium sized ones. Maybe this one that's. Uh, like, well, this you don't want to film this one actually. This oh yeah. Is the, this is the pre pre prototype. You can, you can look up and down. It's kind of. In disarray. Yeah. Um, this was an early proof of concept. Right. To get the size and the shape of it correct. And yep. it, it actually it actually rolled. Um, you can see a big difference here. We got kind of two big drive wheels down there. So yep. this, this sort of drove like a car. And it and it you know, went around the stage. A big improvement to this one. This is a the pre-production prototype. It's very close to what we use on stage in Monaco. Right. Um, we use Omni wheels. Uh, which I don't know if people are familiar with that. Um, it's got oh, rollers I see. It's uh, like going perpendicular to the direction of the actual wheel. So these, these roll in any direction independent of orientation. Okay. So they kind of glide and float and straight. Um, which is which looks very cool. It looks like they're floating on stage. Okay, so instead of driving like a 78 Ford Fairlane, this thing drove like a Segway on... No, 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 it's better. It's a, a Segway that drifts. You know, the okay. Kind of thing just goes sideways. Okay. Backwards or diagonally. And then twists as it turns. In, in this in this robot, you helped actually engineer, design it, fix it, and there's one part that I think a lot of people will recognize, and uh, this is called the OLPC. This is part of the uh, is it Nicholas Nicholas That's right. Uh, one laptop per child project. Mm -hmm. It was designed to be a cheap $100 laptop that could be distributed in the developing world. I think it even had a crank to uh, hand powered or solar right. panels or something, running the Linux operating system. And when I came in here, I saw this OLPC sitting on this robot. So what gives? What, what's what's well, it being usually, used for? Usually it's tucked inside, and it is the brains of the robot. We use this to communicate with our, with our base station. Right. And uh, to run the motor controllers. Uh, it's, it's, the form factor is really nice. It's, right. It's very compact. It's got a great battery life. It's got this mesh network built in. Oh, that's right. Uh, we actually didn't end up using it, but we were considering using it as a backup. You mean the, net, the network? The back. network. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, and well, we got them free, so <laughs> <laughs> that always helps. But no, but it's, it kept it in family. It's part of it's part of the story of the opera. Now, how many how many robots were were used in the this, the performance? These uh, smaller ones. We had uh, nine total on stage at the time. Right. Uh, but we had twelve total off stage. Um, well, we had some some of these. This is the full size one. There are some that are shorter. You can see like here in the picture. Okay. These these guys were shorter. There were yeah. three of those, Actually, and there were nine yeah, of the tall ones. Like, right. And maybe, maybe if you could, is this a still, or maybe you have this a movie over there? We're going to take a look and see what it's like when they're moving around, because um, that's pretty helpful to, to see that particular demonstration. So another interesting fact about this opera is that it was the global premiere was, was it last month? Last month in Monaco. Yeah, in Monaco. And um, so here, here are the robots that Bob helped uh, work on here. They're kind of, you know, what's this? Is like a, they're it's waking a Greek, up? It's a Greek chorus. So okay. basically they, they start on stage in this cluster, and as the music starts, they, uh, they slowly come to life. Okay. And start start moving around, and then uh, they actually start singing. Okay. Um, let's move over to this side right here. So they start singing. They become they become characters. They they are Greek chorus. They introduce this, this story. Yeah. They're they're ordained by their human creators. This this is the future. Um, ordained by their human creators to perform this show. They don't really understand why. Right. But they do it. And uh, then they transform into characters. Very far in the future. And now there's some other robots too. And maybe you can show them on the screen the screen as well. Sure. So those are the medium sized robots, which are about the size of a, a human. But then there, there's some a couple other devices. Uh, let's go. Right. These are the three giant robots. They're yep. about 14 feet tall, 10 feet wide, about 3,000 pounds a piece. And they're completely autonomous. Uh, we press a button on our control system, and they create the set for each scene. Yeah, so, I mean, besides 
when we think of robots, we often think of like humanoid devices, but these are actually not at all humanoid. They don't even have arms. So how do they move and how do they, how do they, I mean, how do you know that it's, what, what makes them different than just a block of lights that you see at any concert? Well, I mean, the, the form of them, they're supposed to resemble bookshelves. Okay. And basically, the idea is that these are, these are bookshelves, and the metaphor is that they're information. Okay. They're kind of, they're memories, they're DNA for the main character who injects his personality and his memories into the system. Right. The system comes alive, we've got this video display, he's off stage wearing the sensors right. on his arms, his breath, um, and so his performance off stage drives the visuals on the walls. Right. So he can direct his attention, he can re respond to the characters who are singing to him in right. the walls, and um, really brings the performance to life in, in real time. Yeah. Maybe we can just see a, a quick thing of them moving around or setting up for a new scene or, show, or showing those particular images. <laughs> it's hard, hard for me to find them. <laughs> So you can see that the screens now, are, they're being used as a display right now. I think they're showing some imagery in the background rather than just random lights. Or are the, are the, are the lights that are being shown on there, those are being manipulated? These are, these are generated, all generated content. There's some video, there's some generated content, it's, it's seamlessly blended back and forth. When you say generated content, you mean content that's using those um, hand sensors. Right, it's algorithms that are generated. Actually, for more detail, you can talk to Peter. Okay. It's really interesting. He has this whole thing, this masterpiece, this embodied performance, how to capture performance from an individual who's not hosted. Right. Now, also, speaking of these uh, hand sensors, I mean, I see we have a, it's like an old Xbox controller line right there. And you mentioned that the, the uh, joystick did have a purpose earlier in the performance, and, or in the rehearsal stage, or the development stage, and what was that? Well, the, the robots, the smaller robots, are driven by joystick. Okay. Um, and the, the reason being is that we wanted them to be autonomous, uh, and we were able to get autonomous motion, but really we're limited by the, our sensing and, and the accuracy of the sensing and the speed of the, of the data transfer. Okay. So they, they move kind of slowly, and the director was like, no, 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 we want them to lurch. And, and, look like they're tipping over and be very human. Okay. So we ended up driving with the joystick, and right. at the end of the day, they, they were driven by joystick in the performance. So that scene that we just saw there, where there's they're kind of rapidly zipping off the stage, you had nine people operating these things? We had, we had uh, four people, and they can punch into different robots really quickly and okay. make it look like they're all moving at once. We, there's some autonomous behavior. Like all of the lights and the elevation and the heads were all run by a central, a central control station. So like even if only four are driving, actually there six could drive at the same time. We had heads moving and lights moving all at the same time. And at certain certain points in the, in the opera, all the heads would go up at once and all the lights would flash at once, so you get a sense of this, this central intelligence. So, so actually then it was kind of like a hybrid yes. autonomous and then joystick type of thing. So the joysticks were basically just for the, for the movement of the bass. Everything else was controlled by this program that you set up and executing it at the exactly. time of performance. Cool. And uh, the piece where they're deployed. Well, this is uh, this is one of the another cool thing I've seen at the MIT Media Lab uh, today. I don't have enough time to stick around because I have class in a little bit. But um, the, the Media Lab is really a fascinating place. I mean, I can say just looking around. Now, there's about a million different projects going on. This is in just one room. There's not enough time to see it, unfortunately. But I hope that they'll have some more uh, more of these um, open houses in the future, so I can see what's going on. And also, the Robot Opera will be coming to Boston in March. So if you are in the Boston area and want to see a pretty fascinating story with some pretty fascinating technology, it will be here uh, in March. And uh, I look forward to seeing it. Maybe even taking my family too. Uh, until next time, Stone Fellows with you. Bye bye.